Okay, day 75, part two, no Eric Braverman. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about more about the law enforcement since Comey is meeting with Trump today. And I wanted to talk more about how the concepts that he picked up from Oliver North at uh, when, he was, as, when he was a professor at uh, Princeton, how he developed, uh, Petraeus developed those concepts into a kind of a counterinsurgency plan for the people of the United States and how Hillary developed that plan. And Braverman's going to be involved in this because you're going to need to create a funding mechanism, a, a, a bribe funnel for this. So as you might have known before, I have said that uh, going all the way back to Mena Airport that Ali North set up in 1984, this has been a funding mechanism. The Clinton Foundation has been a funding mechanism to do exactly this, create terrorism events around the world, whether it be in Europe up here with NATO or in the Middle East or North Africa on the Middle East Project or in the United States. And I predict that there will be terrorist incidents in the United States. But it's all to drive funding and creation of this larger uh, FBI counterterrorism division. <clears throat> so I know that uh, is uh, an, in an interesting claim, so I'll go on to kind of try to prove that. The guy who's at the center of all this is going to be Andrew McCabe at this Joint Terrorism Task Force. This basically allows, it's a hammer, that allows you to go up and into a state law enforcement organization or a federal organization, a federal agency, or a local, and kind of break it apart and create your own task force. So you could have people from Department of Homeland Security, you could have people from IRS, from people from Immigration and Customs, however you want to do it. You just want to attack, attack a certain couple of individuals in, in law enforcement organizations all across the country. You're not looking at getting everybody, you're just looking at infiltration. So that's what JTTF does. <clears throat> well, if you look here, David Petraeus, that's a key fundamental of infiltration. That's a key CIA idea. Uh, and a key idea of, of counterinsurgency. He, he wrote the book on it. Well, in the Army, <clears throat> there's a lot of counter... Uh, Army intelligence is now based on counterinsurgency that David Petraeus wrote. And one of his pet, pet pupils you're going to find is going to be Paula Broadwell, knowing him way, way before the sex scandal, way before, like 2003, 2004. She goes to work at this school in Denver, which is kind of, as I said before, Madeleine Albright, uh, set up as kind of a spy school, and then Hillary kind of co-opted it when she became kind of the shadow secretary of state in 1996. She's going to go to this uh, spy school in 2003 and 2004, taking these uh, kind of concepts, these military concepts. The idea here is shift to more entrapment, uh, sh uh, shift to entrapment strategies, and shift to asset forfeiture. You're going to find out, like, one of the professors here is an ex-CIA guy. He's also a federal prosecutor, and he specializes in asset forfeiture. He also works for Dynacorp, the same company that uh, bought Jeffrey Epstein his helicopter. And you're going to find that Jeffrey Epstein uh, is an, 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 one of these entrapment um, agencies. It's an entrapment operation. It's a brownstone, just like the NATO operations were entrapments. So you got law enforcement spending years, literally, with kids like 17, the one the case here in Portland, to coach them along to try to build them a bomb and so forth. The kid in Portland never even saw the parts to the bomb. They built the bomb for him, for instance, over a three-year period. I mean, one of the uh, informants was the kid's roommate in the, in the Muhammad Muhammad case, uh, fall 2010. So this isn't real crime. It's kind of like fake crime, fake terrorism. But it does, every time one of these things happens, it increases the number of agents for the counterterrorism division. And we saw all those quid pro quos that he did with the State Department to get more agents. <clears throat> so it's a risky business. As I said before, here's the big uh, Brzezinski, uh, you know, kind of giving uh, singers to the rebels in Afghanistan. And, and I've mentioned before, Hillary's kind of just turned that up with uh, 23 uh, or 32 countries now with uh, the Muslim Brotherhood with stingers and, and sarin gas. And then there's the guy who runs it again is, is Chris Hill, and that was kind of um, uh, Hillary's man in Kosovo for that overthrow. So I just wanted to show you that that's why I keep going back to this presidential decision directive of 1998. This is where we decide that we're going to have uh, the CIA infiltration of the FBI is going to be through the counterterrorism division, and it's going to be through JTTF. 
Now, JTTF goes back to 1980 in New York, but it really doesn't gain steam until this uh, project right here. So they try to kind of gloss over when it really started, as, as well as counterterrorism vision. But it really picked up in like 93, 94. So a lot of the Waco and Oklahoma City, the uh, World Trade Center bombing is bringing along this idea of counterterrorism division. This, this is more important than the old traditional uh, FBI work, you know, as far as white collar crime or, or what have you. So, and this is disruption. It says right here, CIA will meet with FBI uh, to figure out ways of using CIA techniques for the FBI. Um, and, the, and these techniques are going to, these counterinsurgency techniques that Petraeus works on are going to be a lot more, a, a lot more home invasion, a lot more uh, lack of paperwork and kind of going around the rules, getting the Patriot Act passed so they don't have to worry about opening up, uh, going for warrants as often. The wireless wiretap uh, comes from this as well with the Snowden stuff, James Risen article on AT&T wiretapping. So where does that let us? What's the results? Well, you know, you fast forward 15 or 20 years now, and you end up with situations like this where we're still, uh, this goes back to December 2012, we're still trying to get these 650,000 emails almost five years later. Um, Counterterrorism division is blocking everything. They've got this red uh, stop sign. They're blocking everything. We've got an active uh, diffuse and uh, disrupt program. Not aimed at terrorists, but aimed at people, you, I can, I'm going to supply the white papers, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy, all this white supremacy stuff. Um, and really, I, you know, if you look around, I mean, there's, you don't see people out protesting as white supremacists. So um, the, um, and then this, you get these blocks here, the five years, and you get all these skirting of the, uh, skirting of the issues, you know, and, and giving immunity to the people that are conspirators. So, if you, it's kind of like to be, their, their theory is, oh, if you have to create crimes to fight crime, well, that's good. Uh, it's just one of the things we do. But now you're starting to get into exploiting children uh, as bait for these operations and so forth. And that's where you, this leads to, this kind of fake crime. Um, we know that about half of Hillary's emails to Huma were classified. So I'm just going based on the Percentages, I would say about 375,000 of the emails are going to be uh, classified. So they should at least publish the 375 unclassified because they should have been handed over five years ago. So, you know, I, I questioned this morning if Comey was going to give Trump an update on that. And here's another situation where if you create this counterterrorism division, it's almost like a secret police. You can bust up agencies like this Secret Service and create these prowler teams, and now you can use those resources of other federal agencies. IRS has an investigative division now, the Forest Service. I mean, all these agencies have their own, you know, machine guns and bulletproof vests and, uh, you know, tear gas and, and so forth, and, you know, IRS, really. So, and then you get this situation where you got 50 agents. Any, anybody mentions anything, the Chaffetz says, hey, you guys shouldn't have been drunk and you should have called the police when they put the bomb at the front gate of the uh, the White House. And then he's 650 in the meeting while he's being questioned, 650 agents on his personnel record. So <clears throat> this is where we're using the Jeffrey Epsteins and the Dynacorp, uh, Dynacorp uh, helicopters. And we're getting all these little kids, uh, you know, uh, not eh, they're maybe f not a lot of 12 and 13 year olds, but 15 and 14 for sure lots of them, for extorting NATO generals and EU politicians to create this donor list for the Clinton Foundation. Um, this is kind of like um, this running crime ring in order to support, again, we'll, you know, it's okay to have some crime if we're going to fight bigger crime. And it's, it's a false, uh, it's, it, it's a false uh, uh, lo logic, I believe. It, it's, it's actually creating more crime because you end up uh, with, with everyone committing crime, um, kind of like the broken window theory, you break enough windows, everybody starts breaking windows. So these, uh, the, the, the quickest way out of this <clears throat> is to give everybody uh, immunity, but publish everything. Trump could say, okay, I don't want to put anybody away. I just want to publish everything. I want to publish all these transactions at HSBC that we did with these, you know, dictators. I want to publish all the illegal contributions. Everybody can have their money, 
but we have to publish all the 1,100 donors because the people of Europe are living under this, where all their uh, circle of politicians and generals are, are blackmail targets and still paying. Same thing in the United States with senators and so forth. So I just say, put the sunshine to this, publish all the emails, classified or not. You can even pass a law that says that nobody can sue us in the world court or we will ignore the world court. But letting this go on uh, with the, these big blackmail networks uh, continue uh, is, is uh, going to basically hamstrung everyone uh, in terms of making any kind of progress. And that's for today. Thanks.